The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. This is Larry Pesavento for TFNN. If you have any questions, it's 877-927-6648. And we're in the middle of a monsoon rain here this morning in Tucson, so if I lose you, it's because the electricity goes out. I have battery generators, but it goes right through those. It keeps the computers working for just a little bit. And then, uh, you know, it just turns everything off. They're just very, very powerful. I wanted to start the show today to talk a little bit about the Forex markets because, uh, you know, we've been very, very bullish, the Japanese yen, for, for quite, a, quite a while. And as most of you know, uh, you know, I like to trade the futures at the CME. There's a difference between when you trade Forex than when you trade the CME. If you trade Forex, you're trading a foreign exchange bank that is unregulated by anyone. If you're trading the CME futures, it's regulated by the CME. You know, but after what's happened to MF Global and uh, PFG uh, Best, uh, I'm not so sure that regulation means a whole lot. But the, uh, the execution can be pretty good. The difference in this particular Forex uh, cross rate is usually they're, they're expressed in dollar versus the yen as everything else is around the world. However, when we get ready to trade the uh, dollar yen when we're trading forex, they have it they have it differently. They have it the reciprocal of the um, dollar yen. In other they they express it as yen dollar and that'll make it the probability or the price at around the uh, 126 level. So so what I did is I posted into Tiger TV um, the a bid and ask on my CQG uh, trader and it shows the uh, bid and ask of the um, the yen versus the dollar. The yen is priced in 126.33 on the offer and 126.32 on the bid. Now, if you're in a forex trading with a forex bank and you're getting quotes, you have to realize that you're getting an average of 13 different forex banks and what the quotes are. So the spreads will be different on some of those banks, but they try to give you an approximation of where you're supposed to be. And so this this the quote services like eSignal and TradeStation and all the others, uh, you know, Reuters, Bloomberg, they're all doing the same thing. They're giving you a, an approximation of the bid and ask. It's very close because the, the volume of trading in Forex is huge. But when you're trading the dollar versus the yen, what you have to do if you're trading at the Merck is that you have to be able to reverse the position. In other words, if you want to be a seller, of the dollar versus the yen, you have to buy the yen when it's at the 126 level. In other words, you, if you want to go short the dollar versus the U.S., uh, you know, the, U, the U.S., uh, uh, the Japanese yen, when you go into the currency, you have to reverse the thing. So instead of being a seller of the um, of the Japanese yen at this point, you want to be a buyer. It's very simple because if you're watching both of them trade, uh, you know, the chart that you're watching where it's trading around, you know, uh, 79 and change, you just look at the, where it's trading at the um, at the Merck and just do the exact opposite. So if you want to sell, you buy. If you want to buy, you sell. And the, the pips are the same. It's not a problem. You know, it's not a not too much of a problem at all. Now, I started the, uh, the show today. I posted a chart from um, the chart of the day from... Uh, I don't know the name of the service exactly, but I look at it all the time because they have some interesting charts. They show the correlation between the Shanghai index, which is the Chinese market, and where we are in the S&P. And as you can see, there's been a huge divergence between China and the uh, and the U.S. over the past, uh, you know, for a long time. China's been in a bear market for a long time. We've been yelling and screaming about that here on the show for a long time. You know, Tom... Uh, was the leader in that thing a long time ago when it was started down and it uh, I was just in Shanghai in April when it was trading in that um, the 2600 level and I you know it was making a top at that point and you know I and they, no one would listen of course because I'm just a technician but you know it's made new lows now and so it's making a pretty good bottom down here we're almost at a 61 percent retracement so we're able to uh, you know, take a look at what it should do, you know, recently. Because we did make a lower low, and if it doesn't go down from here, it will really be um, 
you know, it, it could really go down a lot if it, if it doesn't hold this level. So we'll wait and see. Remember, the China can go up with the rest of the world going down because China came down with the rest of the world going up. So you've got to look at each chart separately if you're a technician. That's one of the advantages of being a technician is the fact that you don't have to, you know, worry about the news. You just look at the chart. If you have more buyers, prices are going to go up. If you have more sellers, prices are going down. That's the fundamental thing, you know, that you're looking at when you're when you're a technician. So if you will, you know, keep that in mind. You know, that's the uh, that's the important thing, you know, to look at because that's all we're doing. Just to give you just to give you an example of that, um, I, I want to talk a little bit about the news here because you know we're, we're hearing a lot of uh, talk about p potential uh, 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 war problems in Iran and Iraq. Folks, these guys have been fighting for three thousand years. You know, a uh, uh, potential war is nothing over there. And uh, you know the talk, you know the people say, well, you don't want to be short crude oil, you know, during this time. The best time to be short crude oil was at the start of Desert Storm. Oil was at forty-four dollars a barrel the day of the of the war when it started in January of '91. Oil dropped ten dollars a barrel that day in the midst of a war. So you know, don't worry about the the fundamentals of these things. Also, we're in the midst of the the worst drought in probably sixty years. Uh, in our in our country here, and yet you know everybody is you know saying you got to start hoarding food, you know folks. The when the news is out and everybody's talking about it, you you got to be very very careful, because you just don't want to be you know caught in a you know situation where things go really wacko. Uh, for, for an example, uh, way back in uh, September of last year, so back a year ago, uh, right about this time, you know the gold market was uh, making a high of um, that 1929 and we were looking at the uh, you know similarities between these moves and what we were watching was we were watching the open interest and we were watching the volume in both gold and silver. And what, what it was telling us is the fact that these markets were getting ready to go down because there were no new buyers coming into the market. You didn't have to know anything about the fundamentals. You just had to, you know, keep a, keep an eye on that particular thing. I will cover the gold and silver later on in the uh, report because I follow the open interest, and we have some positive things, uh, you know, happening at that point. Um, what I'd like to do now is... Uh, uh, talk a little bit about double tops and double bottoms because they're 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 one of the you know better patterns that technicians use, and and we just had something you know very dramatic happen uh, in the Dow Jones, something that we've been looking at for a long time, and that was that thirteen thousand three hundred level. Uh, you know we made a perfect A B equals C D pattern going back from the June fourth solar eclipse. A full moon, and uh, we've been basically straight up for uh, about eight weeks, and uh, we made the exact number. We took out the high of last April by just a, a few a few pennies, and then we've uh, you know we closed lower the first day. So that's the first indication this A B C D pattern is finally getting ready to uh, you know get ready to move uh, in this direction. Now, someone uh, asked me a question about open interest in the U.S. dollar. You know, you can't really, you can't use open interest in the U.S. dollar, folks, is because 99.9% .9 of all the trading in the in the world is is through the Forex Bank. That the Chicago Mercantile Exchange is a very very small uh, indication of, um, of of where interest is, and so you can't use that. It's just non-usable. Okay, we've got a call from Steve. Are you there? Hi, Larry. How are you? What can I do for you? your old stomping grounds in Los Angeles. Ah, I love the I love the place. <laughs> I used to listen to you. In fact, you introduced me to uh, Venus Square Uranus. Oh yeah, long back yeah, about still use it. Eighty-five. Wow. <laughs> what can I do for you? Are, are you going to be at the uh, Traders Expo in Las Vegas in no, November? Nope, I'm done with all the speaking. Uh, no more of those things. I will not do any more. And uh, you know, I'm sort of winding things down. No, I won't be. I won't be doing any more of those. I might do a few, uh, you know, guest spots. Uh, you know, where I talk for an hour or something like uh -huh. that. But that's going to be very rare. Also, it's just, just, uh, I just got too many things going on, Steve. <laughs> okay, great. Could you tell me more about the P index date? Could I figure it out by looking at and if if. Ephemeris. ephemeris. Yes, you can. All you have to do is to look at the ephemeris, and you count the number of aspects that are there on any particular day. If you get 14 or more, you're going to get a P index date, and if you get four oh, okay. or less, you're going to get a P index date. So that's so really. So what's the difference between yours and the Bradley? 
Oh, the Bradley model is totally different. The Bradley model is using um, the weighting of the planets based on the work that was done at Yale University by Dr. Burr, where he weighted, you know, okay. Venus as being positive, Mars being negative. So these were weighted, whereas the P-index just counts the dates. Okay. Anyway, great. I appreciate you, you uh, being there. Okay. Well, thank you very much, and I'm glad you remembered right. going back that far. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot, Steve. Okay, uh, we were we we're talking about the um, the open interest in the dollar index. The dollar index uh, traded at the Merck is so small that it's just insignificant. Uh, I, I've never even looked at the open interest there because Forex is really the players. Folks, basically what I do is I just look at these price patterns. Uh, right now I'm talking about the AB equals CD pattern that we have in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, it completed uh, you know exactly uh, as it was supposed to. Uh, if you look at the same thing in the NASDAQ, we, we did exactly the same thing. We went up and we hit the exact price uh, in the NASDAQ. We took out the old highs from, you know, last uh, March, a perfect ABCD. Uh, you know, we had a 61% retracement that we had coming into to late July, and then we had the straight-up move. And so these this is usually how double tops are formed is with the ABCD pattern uh, in between. Not many technicians look at it that way, but, you know, I do, and I think it gives you a pretty good idea of, of why we're we're looking at that now. Just to just to show you the importance of the A B C D pattern, what I've done today is I put a, a tick chart. This is every tick in the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, since we started trading. I just picked the middle part of the day. This is every tick that goes on. And if you'll just take a look at the chart, if you go into Tiger TV, you'll see that there's just all kinds of these A B equals C D patterns, you know, forming everywhere. And all we're doing is we're looking at you know, retracements and expansions of these numbers because this is how the market moves. It's moving in these little thunderbird, thunderbolt patterns that we call A, B equals C. That's the structure of the market. Now, you can go to a tick chart, a one-minute chart, a five-minute chart, a daily, a weekly, monthly. It doesn't make any difference. They all move that, they move that way. The reason why is that if it's moving up, it's a greed tick, and if it's moving down, it's a fear tick. So it's just fear and greed. And uh, that's that's really the main reason of you know why we're looking at these particular things. Now I don't trade a tick chart, but the patterns are there that shows you that these patterns and ratios are related to the basic structure or the inner molecule of how the market works is that AB equals CD pattern, and it's nothing more than the expansion and contraction of those particular things. Now, I wanted to bring uh, something else to your attention. I know a lot of you uh, do not uh, focus too much on, you know, what's happening uh, in Europe. But frankly, uh, there's a chart I'm putting into Tiger TV right now. It's the Euro Stock Index. It is, uh, you know, basically the Dow Jones of Europe, only it's a lot more, uh, it's, it's, it's fair and more heavily weighted because it's cap weighted. We're going to take a little break here. Then we have a call from um, Kent in Colorado, 877-927-6648. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. 
bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Price Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers, where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Great Panther Silver. For more information, just click the Great Panther Silver banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. Uh, eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight, and we have a call from uh, Kent in Colorado. Are you there, Kent? Yeah. Good morning, Larry. Hi. How are you this morning? Doing well, thank you. Hey, I wanted to ask you if you follow the uh, GPX, the um, Gold Volatility Index, as uh, a barometer of gold's movement. Well, uh, actually, I don't. I basically look at the XAU, the gold stocks, and the Gold Bear Index, the HUI. That's what I use for. You know, volatility because gold and you know silver trade so nicely that you know that's all I really need to do is to see you know where the prices are. So I'm not so much concerned, you know, about the volatility index. I didn't even know that that GDX was a volatility index. I thought it was just an ETF for gold mining stocks. No, it's a GVX George Victor X-ray. Oh, I had the wrong symbol. Okay, just give me a second. This is something good for me because I don't even. Know. It's GVX. Uh huh. G V X. Now, if my little stubby little fingers will type it in right, we'll take a look at it. Hold on here. I didn't even know that there was something like this, and it might even take me a second to update it. Hold on here. Uh, G V X. I'm not getting it, so it must have a dollar sign in front of it. it I, believe, be I believe it does. Yeah. Okay. Give Give me a second here, and I will put this up, and uh, we'll see if we can, uh, you know, get it up the right way. Oh dear, I messed that up badly. Just a second. Okay, we got GVX, GVX. I didn't even know there was one. That, that, well, that doesn't surprise me. I don't know a lot of things, so we'll see what uh, see what More than most, I'm sure. Yeah, well, that, when you get to be my age, you've got to know something more than somebody, otherwise you're in big trouble. Okay, let's take a look at it. I'm still not getting it, my friend. I'm sorry. I don't know why. Okay. Uh, 
I'll, anyway, I will take a look at it, and uh, I'll, I'll report on. If you're listening to the tomorrow show, I will. Uh, I will. I will check this out and get the uh, actual uh, symbol because I get every symbol in the whole world. I just don't have it put into my my system because I don't look at it. But I will double check it for you. Okay, fantastic. Thank you much. Oh, you bet. Uh, and we will cover more of the gold and silver uh, later in the show. But right now, we were just talking about the double tops that we're seeing. You know, in the market, and just about uh, all the things that we're watching, the S and P did a double top. Um, it's just so many of them. And I know whether they make it or not. You know, I'm not sure, but we'll have to wait and see. The Nasdaq also made a double top. Uh, that was primarily due to, I believe, you know, Apple, because you know we had that that big price objective uh, in Apple that we were looking at that uh, you know went up to that 675 level, which was the you know 1.27 you know, expansion uh, of this last big move. And so what I'd be watching now, uh, Kent, if you and I'm talking about stocks now, but is you want to be watching uh, Apple coming back to a 61% retracement, which would be around that 664. In other words, okay. you, have a, you have a $25, almost a $30 break to the downside, and then if it rallies back to 664 and can't get any higher than that, then I would expect the market to start to turn, uh, you know, start to turn down again. Okay, good info. Thank you much. Okay, yes, thank you for calling in. I, I appreciate it. I will double check that volatility index. It's something new to me. I, I didn't know, uh, you know, that it that it existed. Remember, when I first started trading, folks, we had about 23 things or 24 things, I think, that we traded uh, in commodities. There was only 1,600 shares uh, listed on the New York Stock Exchange, and the average volume on the New York Stock Exchange was 5 million shares. And the reason why I remember that is in 1965, I was in California, and uh, the New York Stock Exchange in January of that year traded more than 5 million shares uh, on that day, and there was a big party in the Walston Company office that was owned by uh, Ross Perot, and he happened to be there that day, and I got to meet him, and uh, it was uh, really amazing. <laughs> but now the Intel does 5 million in the first few minutes, so <laughs> things really happen very quickly uh, nowadays. Um, we we talked about the divergences that we saw happening. Uh, I don't want to repeat too many. I'm just going to go quickly. But you know, we had a major divergence in the transportations. The utilities are still going down. You know, they don't rally very much at all. The volatility index has made a bottom, uh, in my opinion. It's uh, you know it had so many patterns there. You know, double bottoms, butterflies, uh, A, B, C, Ds. I think there were five patterns uh, occurring in the VIX index. So you know that tells us that if this pattern is correct this is what we're going to be what we're going to be looking at is that we're going to have something you know dramatic to happen i think uh, basil pointed it out you know uh, looking at some of these things also that it will take something of a dramatic nature whether it's uh, the fed not doing something the fed doing something whatever whatever it probably won't make any difference because something will pop out you know and uh you know that was really amazing so anyway i would like to um take a little break here and we get back we're going to cover some gold and silver and then after that we're going to cover some bonds Tom O'Brien's daily trading newsletter, Market Insights, has delivered powerful results for subscribers, and now is the perfect time to try it out for two weeks absolutely free. We're so confident in the value Tom provides his subscribers in his daily newsletter that through Labor Day weekend only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system, completely free of charge, will even cover the shipping cost. Cancel at any time during your two-week free trial to market insights and pay nothing and keep tom's free book as a gift from us this offer is only valid for new subscribers we've only extended this offer once before and it will only be active for a short period of two weeks so act now to take advantage of this great offer and be ready to capitalize on a more active more volatile market once traders return from their august vacations all the details are on the front page of tfnn.com sign up for your free trial to get your free copy of tom's best-selling book today Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? 
Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're going to be talking about the uh, gold and the silver market because we are at a really uh, critical level. Uh, well, what are you talking about? We're going higher. It's just a question is we're going to have some type of a, a sell-off right here, I believe, because we've completed some uh, A, B, C, D uh, patterns uh, on the gold uh, that I think are, are relatively important. Uh, I don't think the, the correction is going to be that much, but, uh, you know, we're really looking at, uh, you know, we broke out above the 630 level. So the first uh, correction we want to be watching is if it gets to back below 630, that would be the possibility that, you know, something could really be wrong. But, you know, this this market is really looking like it's turning. You know, the gold stock started turning, you know, four or five weeks ago. And uh, it's really, uh, you know, it's, it's really interesting, you know, what's happening. We've had five higher bottoms now uh, in the gold market. Each one of them was either a 786 retracement or a 61% retracement. And uh, it's really, uh, it really looks like it wants to go higher. We have the uh, the same situation occurring in the silver market. You know, we we had that triple bottom formed in late June, and now we are, uh, you know, looking at the market starting to turn. It hasn't went crazy to the upside, but at least we got above 2,900 now. Uh, 2,900. Oh boy, I guess there's going to be some inflation coming uh, above 29 dollars an ounce. And now if it pulls back to that 28.50 an ounce, that was the old point of the breakout, that would be the place we'd be watching for your first support. So, uh, you know, I don't like to buy into strength here. You know, we've, we've uh, had a 15% move in the, uh, the gold stocks that we were watching. 
and uh, you know we'll we'll just have to see if history is going to repeat itself. If we if we have one day in gold where we move fifty dollars up, uh, this is where we really could have a um, uh, something really could uh, really dramatic could start to happen, and that's where we want to uh, you know focus our attention. If that should occur, then we know that we're we're roughly you know on our way uh, you know to the upside. So we'll have to uh, just let history decide whether it's going to do that or not, and. Um, the, uh, since we're since we're talking about the metals, uh, I think we should take a take a look at copper because we discussed it uh, just a few days ago uh, on Monday, and we have completed that uh, that bearish Gartley pattern uh, that we were uh, you know we were discussing the fact that the market was moving in the same direction, but only a terrible correlation between the uh, you know the stock market and copper. And now we've had uh, you know this is our third higher excuse me our th- third lower high. Uh, that we've had, we've got a bearish Gartley that formed here at thirteen three dollars and forty seven cents a pound uh, in the copper this morning, and so uh, this is if it's not any good, it's going to start to to go down from from this level. So uh, uh, that's the pattern that we see happening. So we're due for a correction in the metals. You know, we've had a you know really nice move here coming out of here, and now we will find out if we're going to. Uh, you know, hold it up. Now, the open interest and volume statistics. Okay, I've been checking these uh, each day now. We are seeing increases in volume in both silver and both gold, and also slight increases in the open interest. Not as much as I would like, but at least there's nothing, you know, that's not decreasing. If it was decreasing, this would be a false, what we call a, a BS, which means a baloney suggested uh, rally. But this is not happening. We're having increases in volume and increases in open interest in both gold and silver, and so that's a good thing. So all we're preparing now is to see what the correction is going to be if one, in fact, does come. And that's what uh, that's what our what's what our strategy you know should be should be uh, uh, focused on. Now tomorrow I'm going to be uh, doing my commodity show. It'll be my last show for a while because I've got to take a little break here. And I think um, if you get a chance to try to listen in because we're at some really critical levels in a lot of things, folks. And um, I'm talking about grains, crude oil, gasoline, you know everything. And uh, there's going to be a lot of things happening at that spot. So we will. Uh, we will take a look and see if we have a uh, uh, situation in these commodities. It could be uh, very interesting. Now, I, I realize that there's been a lot of talk in the news. In fact, I, I, I listen to the news as, as, and in weather reports for the drought and how bad it is and everything. And, folks, I can tell you from more than one time in my life and experiences that when all this news comes out, you know, it's pretty much in the market. My most vivid uh, explanation of this was uh, a huge turning point in my career. Right before I went to work for Drexel, uh, I was long into uh, early July. We'd had a very bad uh, planting season, and, uh, you know, the, the amount of grains that were going to be planted was very small. The weather was horrible. Uh, demand was fantastic, and the Reuters were saying the only soybeans that were going to be available would be in the Smithsonian Institute. And believe me, I was long beans, oil, and meal, and I started writing tickets as fast as I could, you know, and I put, raised my stop to one cent under the previous day's close, uh, and they were, I, it's a long story, but it, it was just amazing how bullish they were, and the, and eventually, uh, before the market uh, opened, uh, it opened just very slightly higher in the most bullish things in the world that we'd ever had, and it went limit down for five days in a row. And, um, you know, right after that, I went to work for Drexel. That was uh, 19, uh, early 1976. Okay, but so don't, don't, let, the, don't let the news bother you. Uh, the same thing in the oil. You know, they're talking about, you know, possible war, and, you know, that's all the same thing. You know, nothing is more, uh, was more bullish uh, on oil than we were going to, uh, to war in Desert Storm in January. Uh, all, all I was waiting for was the new moon in January because uh, Norman Schwarzkopf on his desk was the, the book, The Art of War, and Sun Tzu said, you know, attack in the darkness of the moon. And so uh, Schwarzkopf was a believer in that. And so when the full moon, when the new moon came out and it was very dark, the seals went in, planted the targets. The war lasted 12 hours. Uh, oil went from $44 a barrel to $11 a barrel. It dropped uh, Eleven dollars a barrel the first day, uh, from forty-four to thirty-two, and then it went to eleven dollars a barrel later in uh, later in that year. So, that's the um, 
That's so. Don't let the news. The news is out there. the The, the market follows the news. You know, the uh, uh, once the news comes out, you know, it, it's already over. You know, it's just like when Time Magazine, you know, publishes something. It's it's usually. Uh, you know history. So whether that's true or not, I don't know. But they just pu- pu- published a article about Obama being gone, and I certainly hope they uh, they might be right this one time. I'm not sure. But if you go back and look at the history of Time Magazine, boy, if you get on Time Magazine, man, you start going short. That's not the thing to do. Okay, let's. Well, we've covered the um, the gold and silver. We need to cover the ones that we're watching really closely here, and that is the uh, Treasury bond market. Uh, you know, we've had this uh, move down to the 1.27, and now we're expecting a, a nice little rally. And if we can get the the bonds to rally up to a, a possible 61% retracement up into this 150 level, uh, that would be an ideal place, you know, where we would be looking to uh, potentially do this. But if we go back below the 145 level now, uh, that's going to be incredibly bearish uh, to bonds. In other words, higher interest rates. And this is what we're looking at is we think we're going to have higher, higher interest rates. Uh, remember about a year ago, you know, everybody was talking about how China was going to bail us out of everything. And, you know, we were focusing only on the charts and the charts for China and uh, the Hang Seng and all that stuff, you know, were, were incredibly bearish. And yet everybody was really bullish and saying they were going to bail us out. And, uh, you know, that, that did not come to pass. And, and all I'm doing is just looking at the patterns, folks. I mean, you don't have to pay any attention to the rhetoric that you hear coming out of my mouth. Just look at the, just look at the charts, you know, that you see. Uh, uh, you know, two, a year, well, actually, it was a year and a half ago, uh, I was actually in Hong Kong giving some speeches in Hong Kong and China. And they interviewed me and they put an article um, in the front page of the, uh, Hong Kong paper about the butterfly pattern forming in the, the Hang, Seng, Hang Seng Index. We were also having the same thing happening in China. And the market topped the next day uh, right at that price. And, of course, I never heard from anybody from that. But uh, I didn't get run out of town, so that's a good thing. But all I'm doing is just looking at the, looking at the patterns. That's all I'm looking at. I, uh, I don't listen to the news a whole lot. But, um, you know, that's the, that's the thing that, you know, keeps me, you know, uh, alive and well in these markets is the fact that nothing ever changes uh, differently. Uh, so a caller uh, asked me, uh, or excuse me, I got an email today from someone asking me about the, the situation at Lewis Bacon and Company uh, because they returned uh, $2 billion of their $12 billion. And, and Lewis Bacon wrote an article, a letter to all of his customers saying things were different and, and the government was intervening and these markets were not fair or anything. Folks, that is, that is a crock. I mean, these markets are no different than they were in 19... 19- 07, 1927, 1937, 1957, they're all doing the same thing because they run on the same things, fear and greed. There's always going to be people in there trying to do some manipulation and playing games and stuff, but frankly, it means very, very little. The markets go back and forth just like they always have. If I didn't believe that in all my heart, I wouldn't be a technician. I'd go back to doing you know, some fundamentals where I counted every soybean and every kernel of corn, and that, you know, doesn't work either because by the time you count them, something has changed. So this is what we're what we're trying to do here is to see that, you know, we can get at least a heads up on some of these things to see where we are. Now, we we need to go to the, um, the, the what rules this whole thing here, which is the U.S. dollar index, and uh, we need to uh, discuss it for a second in my my challenge here is that I've got to find – let's start with the euro first because we are – uh, that's 53% of what the uh, what the market is doing uh, anyway. And we're at a very, very critical level in the euro. We've been talking about it for a long, long time. Uh, we're at this, we hit that 61% retracement uh, two times in a row now today and yesterday. Uh, we've made that uh, almost exact, that 125 level. The exact 618 was uh, uh, 124.89, and the uh, euro hit uh, 124.87. So that was within exactly two pips of where we are and uh you know this should hold it and we've been rallying now for about five weeks that's about all you're going to get in a bear market so my assumption is here that we are getting ready to see the uh uh, euro start to turn down again and we'll probably see the u.s dollar which is at you know very very critical level uh, that we've been you know mentioning for a long time uh the level of uh, uh 82 we're a little bit below that right now i'm going to post that in just a second 
and we will get a chance to uh, to look at it. But it's uh, it's completing the pattern, and this is uh, you know where you'd want to be watching the uh, U.S. dollar index if you wanted to be getting ready to go long. We've had some really nice patterns here. Uh, in the uh, U.S. dollar index, uh, you know, recently on on its way down. But we're at major support here at this 82 level. And uh, whether it stops here or not, we, we won't know. It will be related to the euro because if the euro gets above 125 by very much, then you're going to be looking at, uh, you know, some lower prices in the U.S. dollar and the euro could go even higher. But right now the way it looks is that the euro has made some type of a top in here and the U.S. dollar index should be bottoming, you know, very, very, uh, sh- very, very soon. And then we'll have to uh, understand. So a uh, question pr- uh, asked me uh, uh, why, I, uh, why I would be selling the euro here. Uh, well, I mean, it's a 618 retracement. It's ABCD. That's a Gartley pattern. I don't have to risk very much here. I've already sold it once and bought it back once, so I'm still in most of it. So that's why I'm doing it. It's uh, right at that number. So whether it's going to work or not, I don't know. Some of them don't work. Some of them do work. I, that's all I can say. Now, we, um, we have the commodity show tomorrow, but we've got things happening today in the commodity market, so I'm going to mention them briefly because they're, they're important to all of us. And, and one of them is the fact that we have the, uh, the crude oil is making a, um, you know, a Gartley pattern that we hit exactly uh, to the exact 61% retracement that we've been watching for um, a great deal of time. We've been waiting for this uh, level to be hit. And um, that level was hit exactly yesterday, and I will put this into Tiger TV so you're able to be able to see it. And, uh, you know, we are at the point where uh, we're at this major Gartley pattern. It's an ABCD uh, right at the, you know, the one point uh, at the 618 retracement. And, uh, you know, whether it works or not, uh, I'm not sure, but it, it's literally holding up uh, right where it should be. And the same thing is also happening folks with the uh, with the gasoline futures you know we talked about the gasoline futures a long time ago when it was down in the you know the two um, you know the 260 level that you know when it was making the bearish uh, bullish butterfly pattern at the bottom and now we are very very close to the 61 um, percent retracement which is a gartley pattern on the sell side we'll cover more of these tomorrow but these are the ones that are that are happening uh, right now there's a lot of things happening all across the the spectrum of commodities i mean uh, wheat corn beans oil gasoline heating oil uh silver gold i mean all of them are are at uh, you know at real critical levels uh, in my opinion so and believe me that's my opinion so you have to do the work yourself and uh, you know d- defy human nature and uh, you know do the work yourself so th- these are the ones that were that I think that are important to be you know keeping an eye on at this point uh, someone asked me um, uh, a question about the Australian dollar if the you know if I thought it was still going to look to go lower. And, uh, you know, this, this is no more different pattern. Uh, is it, it's not any different. Excuse <laughs> Getting so I can't even walk and chew gum at the same time at my age. Luckily, I'll have to get some more denture cream and get my, uh, my, my lisp uh, finish fixed. Okay, uh, the Australian dollar went up to the exact 786. We had a three-drive pattern at that time. And uh, now we're still heading down. We had a very, very minor rally. We're, we're, it looks like we're going lower there. We've got to take a break. Then we're going to um, review uh, what we're having in the market and uh, wind the show up. 877-927-6648. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. 
Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market, something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're going to summarize the market. You know, we already talked about the divergences that we see in the transportations, the utilities, the VIX index, the double tops in the Dow Jones, the S&P, the NASDAQ, and now I wanted to put the uh, New York Stock Exchange Index chart in to show you that, uh, you know, we've basically, I think we've completed that double or that uh, 786 retracement Gartley pattern that was just like the Euro uh, stock chart that I posted earlier in the show. So that says, you know, really the rest of the world is not uh, making breakouts and there's a lot of things to say we should be really, really careful here. Uh, now, finally, uh, you know, I am going to be taking a break. Uh, people are concerned about me. I'm okay. It's just that I'm older, and I just can't keep the energy level up doing everything that I'm doing. And uh, I took a break of two weeks, you know, back in April because I saw that big move coming down. And, you know, the old sell in May and go away, and, you know, that worked out really good. And, uh, you know, I came back in uh, the middle of May, took a couple weeks off there, uh, this time I've got to take it off for myself because uh, my doctor, has, uh, who happens to be one of my friends and customers, comes by and he says, look, you're not a kid anymore. You just can't keep up these hours uh, that you're doing. So I'm going to do the things that, uh, that really need to be done. And I, I work really hard to get this uh, you know, uh, radio show ready every day, and that takes me about 10 to 12 hours a week. 
So if I can take that off, uh, that helps a little bit. I'm still going to be able to do the newsletter because I have to do that anyway. And so I'm going to be breaking uh, away from uh, my usual thing. Basically, it's just breaking away from my usual routine of working 14 hours a day, six or seven days a week. Thank God it looks like I don't have to take that boat ride with Mr. O'Brien. If I had to do that, I would just keep working till the Grim Reaper came around. But uh, the other than that, I feel pretty good given my age. I love doing what I'm doing and everything. But the um, you know it's just it just gets a little little bit too much. And don't forget, Sarah and I travel a lot. And that makes it uh, uh, a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, trying too. So uh, I'm going to be fine. I just need a little time off, and it'll be uh, it'll, everything will be good. I'll always be watching the markets, folks. I cannot stop that. That is a uh, you know something that's been with me forever, uh, and I, I, I that's what I really enjoy doing. I mean, this is uh, you know someone asked if you would take a you know a, a, take a chance and uh, you know play golf with Tiger Woods. First of all, I don't like golf. And um, anyway, I wanted my final chart that I wanted to put in here today is a New York Stock Exchange index chart going back to September to December. And if you'll notice that when we made our high in March, that was also done on that big A, B equals CD pattern. So this is why we want to be, uh, you know, watching these potential double tops that we're seeing in all these indices and then the 786 retracements that we see in the major indices you know across the uh, across the globe so that's what we're looking at uh, okay tomorrow's going to be uh, the commodity show a lot of things to cover on the commodities show folks um, and um, everybody have a wonderful day and may god bless